That was in uh, Mosul, Iraq. And we were out on dismounted patrols when we got in ambushed. I caught some shrapnel on my back and my face. And as I remember seeing flames, and the next I was in the hospital. I had a bad jump. As a paratrooper, you learn to suck it up and drive on, so that's what I did until the legs actually gave out. Staff Sergeant Timothy Conley and Master Sergeant Deborah Ryan Hurd are members of the U.S. Army's elite 82nd Airborne, stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. While each suffered very different injuries, both fight a similar battle, living yeah. with severe chronic pain. It, it, it's hard when you're able to run and you're like the fastest girl in your unit, and then you can't even walk from your front door to your mailbox. In and out of hospitals, surgeries, just every different doctor you go to, you got to start over from the beginning again. And when I got here, everything changed. Sergeant Conley um, was initially injured in Iraq in, in 2006 by an IED, and he developed back pain after that injury. Uh, he subsequently had a back surgery about two years later, which didn't resolve really any of his pain. Uh, and now he has back pain and he has neuropathic uh, leg pain um, after the surgery. How's it going? Fine, sir. Dr. Thomas so Weber so is so chief so of pain so services so at Fort Bragg. So he and Dr. Dragovich focus on helping soldiers reduce their chronic pain, improve their quality of life, and if possible, return to active duty. Mess Sergeant Reinhardt, uh, you know, came into the clinic here after uh, two back surgeries here. Uh, she basically, uh, a, a woman who's been in the military for 19 years, very hard-charging soldier, very active soldier. For the last year and a half, she's been dealing with uh, extreme pain. She was the perfect candidate. I walk with a cane. Sometimes on bad days, I have to walk with a walker. And he's telling me that I might be able to not use my cane because the pain will be controlled with the device. Neurostimulation works by placing electrodes in the spinal cord right in the epidural space and masks pain pathways by, uh, through the use of electrical impulses. In some circles, it's uh, been labeled as pacemaker for pain. Neurostimulation therapy is typically done in two phases, with the first being a temporary evaluation where the patient experiences the therapy during a trial period. This is conducted by placing a lead or leads in the epidural space that is connected to an external stimulator. Because the leads are temporary, patients must follow precautions after receiving a trial system. In general, patients are asked to avoid activities that could cause the leads to move, such as reaching, bending, stretching, or lifting anything heavier than five pounds during the evaluation period. Physicians' instructions regarding acceptable activities and caring for the bandaged area should be followed. The next day I was able to go to church and not be adjective, stand up, move, you know. It, it helped me out. I didn't want to give it up. <laughs> okay, now we're in the epidural space. We're going to advance this uh, electrode. The permanent procedure typically is done on an outpatient basis with light IV sedation. The patient may be alert during parts of the procedure, which can allow clinicians to ensure that the stimulation is working to manage the patient's pain. So you're feeling the stimulation where all your pain normally is? Yes. Because the placement of the implant system requires surgery, surgical complications are possible. These can include infection, paralysis, severe bleeding, and persistent pain, numbness, or weakness at or around the implantation site. Additional complications could occur, such as allergic reactions to the device. It's not perfect from this isn't the end all be all or anything like that, but an appropriate selected patients and appropriately educated patients, you know, it, it's a must have in, you know, in dealing with any pain clinic. If you want to say you're a true pain clinic, you need to have this in, in your, you know, armatarium to try to, uh, you know, treat these soldiers. For the vast majority of patients, we consider success uh, to be more than a 50% reduction in pain and the ability for that patient to do something meaningful in their life that they couldn't do without it. Oh, I am extremely happy I went through with this <laughs> procedure. Um, every day is, was a big improvement. And I'm, I'm able to get up and do what I want to now. I got my life back.
we're returning guys to the fighting force. You know, we're preserving the fighting force. Uh, I think spinal cord stimulation or neuromodulation in general is a, is a tremendous benefit uh, for the soldiers. Uh, like I said before, doing the right thing for the patient, you know, like regardless if you're getting them back on active duty or not, it's doing the right thing for somebody who sacrificed a lot for the country. If you would like to learn more about neurostimulation, visit www.poweroveryourpain.com to access these resources.